Why is it some people in business or even in life seem to have every advantage? Everything's been given to them. The right timing, the right market, the right technology, the right insight. Or just an average person. Did you ever notice how sometimes the people that were given everything, they were given love, support, education, money, very oftentimes those are the people that spend their life going in and out of rehab. And then you see people that seem to have everything against them. You know, they didn't have the money, they didn't have the education, they didn't have the background. But something inside of them was so hungry that they were driven to find answers. They were driven to find a way to add value to other people's lives. And they found a way to thrive, to succeed, to achieve, to contribute on a significant scale. What is that difference that makes the difference? I don't care how much money you make, you only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. Don't let it go. See, and here's a, something else I want you to begin to look at. Why is it that most people don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it? I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us and we don't believe that we deserve it. Once you understand how valuable time is, you've begun a journey that you will not forget as long as you live. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast, you have to literally run to stand still. There's patterns that psychologically and emotionally make us not use our ability, make us get frustrated or angry or overwhelmed or uncertain or scared or fearful and freeze up and not use that ability, that talent, that skill. And there are other patterns that will get you to own yourself, get you to be able to influence your own team, get you to influence customers. In life, we all have to wait. It's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises. The key is to learn to wait the right way. Not discouraged, upset, negative, it's never gonna happen. No, the right way to wait is with expectancy. In other words, I know my set time is coming. What's the benefit of allowing fear to hold you back? What's the benefit of giving up on yourself? of not stepping out on life and taking life on. What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? It's one of the things I had to ask myself. So I didn't want to make any mistakes. I wanted everybody to like me. I wanted to be perfect the first time I did something. It's not going to happen. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to hurt some folks' feelings. You're going to create some enemies. Whenever you decide that you want to begin to take life on, you've got to ask yourself, 
how long am I going to allow this to hold me back? I like what Zig Ziglar says. He said, fear is false evidence appearing real. That is an illusion that we create in our mind. It is a state of mind that can be changed. So let's look at how we can begin to take some steps to restructure that fear. 